Hey, welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and man, my kangaroo pickup video has blown up. By the time you're watching this, it will have passed 6,000 views, making it my most watched full-length episode by far, which is incredible. And, and I know why you're watching it. It's definitely not for my dashing good looks, and I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that Abandoned Mall was in the title and thumbnail. No, 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 it definitely wasn't that. You're watching it because you love Atari Kangaroo, and who doesn't? Best game ever, right? So that's what I'm gonna give you more of. I'm gonna give you more Atari Kangaroo. In this episode, we're gonna keep working on that project. If you remember, in that pickup video, uh, when we powered on the cabinet, we were able to get the monitor to come up and the, the game PCB was running, but the image on the screen was totally garbled. It's all messed up, you know, both with the game PCB attached and when, with my test pattern generator attached. So I've, I think I have some sort of sync issue. I wasn't able to get the, the image to sync at all. So we're going to try to fix that uh, in this episode. It's a Matsushita uh, TM202G, which is definitely, it definitely does not have a sterling reputation amongst uh, arcade enthusiasts. So uh, that's what we're going to do in this episode. Try to get that monitor working and hopefully by the end of this video, we'll see Atari Kangaroo running on that monitor. So if that sounds like fun, why don't we head out to the garage and get started? Let's go! Overtime! Overtime. All right, we're back out here in the garage and let's get this kangaroo monitor out so that we can work on it. Oh, and the thing wants to tip over because <laughs> it's missing one of its uh, leg levelers. Okay, and I think these are just, there's four bolts in here and they're just hand loose. So or the nuts are hand loose, so let me pull these out. That's one. I'm always worried about losing these things. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's funny how these things work, right? Like, uh, <laughs> this the pickup video for this kangaroo is the most viewed, most watched video I've done by far. Uh, <laughs> and the only thing I can figure is that people really like the idea of picking the thing up from an abandoned mall. So uh, thank you to all of you new viewers. Thank you for those of you who have returned. It's a beautiful night out here in Virginia. It's been absolutely gorgeous the last several days. Super low humidity, low temperature for August. But now the humidity is back, so apologies if I start sweating and uh, I had been actually planning to work on a, a do a different game for this episode. Oh, come on. Um, oh, these gloves are in the way. I had uh, I had been working all week. It's today is Thursday. This video will be out on Saturday for Overtime Arcade Channel members, and Sunday for everybody else. I had been working all week on my kangaroo, or not my kangaroo, this is the kangaroo. I have been working all week, this one doesn't want to come out, on the uh, the Qbert, working on the transformer, and I was hoping to get the power supply working and tested. Oh, that really doesn't want to come off. Um, and uh, that video will be coming soon, but I realized I had forgotten to buy something that I thought I had purchased months ago, so. Uh, no problem. We'll work on the kangaroo. Uh, again, this is a Matsushita TM202G. Um, commonly found in like hole positions, I think. And this has Xevious burn, so I'm guessing this, this monitor was originally in a Xevious. And uh, I've never worked on one of these monitors before. So on the one hand, I'm a little bit excited to learn, you know, something new, a new, a new to me monitor. 
Uh, but on the other hand, this thing has a terrible reputation, so I am not at all excited about that part. And let's see, I don't really want to grab the tube, but what would be the best way to get this thing off the frame? Not off the frame, get it off the, uh, the mounting posts. Maybe if I gently grab it like that. There we go, okay. Okay, now it's coming out. All right, that wasn't so bad. Something sounded like it fell and I have no idea what that was. And I guess these top ones don't don't come out. No, those, those stay there. All right, so there's our monitor out of the cabinet. So let's see how we get this chassis off of the frame. Again, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this in real time here with you because uh, I was not planning on working on this tonight. So look at this. <laughs> look at this ridiculous thing. Let's see if I can lower, lower the uh, tripod a little bit here so you can get a better look. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really have no idea how to even, even take this thing off of the frame. Um, I mean, first things first, let's, uh, let's discharge it and disconnect the anode cup. So like always, I've got my trusty and a bit rusty homemade discharge tool. It's just a large flathead screwdriver uh, with a length of wire attached to the metal uh, part of the screwdriver. At the other end of that wire is a alligator clip. The whole thing is, it's actually wrapped and soldered uh, the wire to the, uh, the metal part of the screwdriver. All of that is wrapped in electrical tape because you don't want to be touching any part of the metal. So I am, uh, let's do it in a place where you can maybe see. Oh, actually, <laughs> you can't see it at all. Yeah, good job, Charlie. Great camera work here. So I'm gonna uh, attach the alligator clip to metal part of the chassis or the frame. Left hand in my pocket, right hand comes in like this. And we will attempt to discharge the monitor. I guess it's already been discharged. So we can come in here and take that off. And look at that. Look at that bizarre clip on right there. It's usually like, almost like alligator, um, not alligator, rabbit ears, right? These two like prongs. And that's just bizarre. It's just weird, weird, weird monitor. Yeah, we'll just double check that we've discharged it. Yeah, we're good. Uh, and the reason you need to do that is, you know, monitors, tubes in particular, can hold on to a charge even long after they've been switched off. Um, but I think we're good with that. And let's see. Uh, I see a grounding wire that's screwed in here. Uh, obviously, we'll have. So this is the power input. And I'm looking around. Um, what in the world? <laughs> I'm looking at this Degauss circuit and like, how does that, how does that come apart? Uh, okay, there's like a twist tie here. I don't, this thing has clearly never been worked on. Um, all right, so that's disconnected. And the dis gauze plugs into this little extra little daughter board over here. This thing is such a bizarre setup. All right, the gauze is disconnected. Okay, we should have yoke wires. We should have uh, some sort of grounding thing. Let me pull the neck board off super gently. And Dell always tells me not to rock it because you'll bend the pins. 
But I feel like if you pull really hard, you'll screw something else up. Okay, let's see. These are the yolk wires over here. Okay, come on. All right. All right. Of course, that is zip tied together, and this monitor is probably probably should have been cleaned. It's filthy. Good lord. Goodness gracious. All right, this is at least a reusable zip tie. All right, so those are the yolk wires are clear. And this is the DAG. It's like a grounding strap that goes to the neck board. That's disconnected. And we might, oh my God, my hands are getting filthy. I should have put gloves on. I think I can't see anything else that's connecting the tube to the chassis. Well, it really looks like it's just the, no, there's filth everywhere. Okay, so what would I need to disconnect to remove this sucker? I'm gonna start by, you can see this, there's a little grounding wire here that I'm going to disconnect. Okay. See, oh my God, my hands are filthy already. Uh, so if you remember, and I think there's two screws here. Does this make sense? If you remember in the last episode, this monitor, we can get the monitor to power up. Uh, the only issue is we can't get it to sync. And uh, reading some stuff online suggested that yeah, I think we're I think we're off. Uh, reading some stuff online suggested you know if you can't get any sort of sync, um, uh, if you can't get it to sync at all, it could be uh, a cap kit and uh, adjusting the B plus. So let's see, does this come right out? Wow, it's on a little slider. And look at this thing. Look at this chassis. It's like half empty, half unpopulated. And I guess the story is this was originally like a Panasonic television chassis, like for TV. And, uh, you know, there was so, such a, a run on uh, arcade monitors and I guess Atari or whoever asking Panasonic to help out and produce more, you know, arcade monitors. And so they obliged. And rather than building one from scratch, they modified a, uh, a TV uh, chassis and removed everything you would need for like a tuner and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. So cool. So let me uh, <laughs> wash my hands, put gloves on. I'll get the uh, soldering iron fired up and uh, we'll get started with this cap kit. All right, got my gloves on, <laughs> got the tripod set up. I'm trying a new angle. So hopefully this is uh, uh, something that makes things a little bit easier to see. I wiped the chassis down just a tiny bit, mostly around the the neck board and the flyback, uh, just because it's absolutely, absolutely filthy. But uh, I probably should have washed this thing. You've, you know, I've got a couple of videos where I show uh, how to wash uh, a monitor. But uh, yeah, so we got the uh, the cap kit right here from ArcadePartsRepair.com for the Matsushita. <laughs> Careful, uh, TM202G. You don't want to mispronounce that. Um, so yeah, hopefully by uh, doing this cap kit may address our sync uh, issue, and that's usually not the case, right? Um, but uh, apparently, with this monitor, uh, that can help. So we'll do the we'll do the cap kit, and uh, we'll dial in the B plus, and we'll see uh, what the sync looks like at this part. So we've got all these different sort of parts uh, of the chassis. We've got a video amplifier board. We've got the neck PCB, the deflection PCB which is one of these, and then the main board right there. And there are a boatload of caps here. So um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do this. Hopefully the battery on my uh, phone doesn't run out. I use my phone as my camera. Uh, but obviously I'll speed this up and uh, we'll go step by step through the instructions here and uh, install this cap kit.
Okay, one extra thing I wanted to do before uh, <laughs> wrapping this up is uh, test the horizontal hold pot, right? Because I think I was having issues with horizontal sink. Um, so I've removed it from the chassis and I think both battery on my camera and on the gimbal is about to die. But you saw the whole cap kit, which honestly wasn't that bad. So I'm going to clip on my leads to either end of this pot or potentiometer. There we go. And what I'm looking for is uh, good. I want to see good um, a good range here. I'm not even entirely sure what the <laughs> range is supposed to be. Now if everything's falling out of the way. Wow. Okay, let's see. How about like this? There we go. We grab a TV adjustment tool. Uh, this is one that's not in the package. And if I can get this, whoops, kick the camera or the tripod. If I can get this in here. Of course I can't. <laughs> it's like two, I don't know. Maybe I can adjust it from the outside. I mean, it's moving. Oh. Let's see. This thing just does not like any of my TV adjustment tools. There we go. None of these really like to move it. I mean, it is moving. Come on. None of these want to move it. Just <laughs> can get a metal screwdriver. <laughs> All right, that's the minimum, maybe 45 up to four and a half, which I guess this is working. I'm going to spray a little uh, deoxit in here and try to work it back and forth a bit. Um, I guess screwdriver in the back helps it to move. So I'm going to just put a couple drops of deoxid in this and work it back and forth a bunch. Uh, and then I will solder it back into the chassis and then we'll be ready to put the chassis back into the monitor and uh, give it a test. All right, here we go. Here is the remnants or aftermath of the cap kit. All those, uh, old capacitors and uh, uh, the leads from the new capacitors that were cut off. And we have our freshly recapped chassis right here. So that honestly wasn't <laughs> as bad as I was expecting. Uh, the sort of design with the, the frame, which is awkward and cumbersome, uh, actually made it somewhat easy to kind of prop the thing up and rather than having to uh, flip the chassis, you know, back and forth, uh, like you often have to do. Like you saw in the, uh, in the video, it's just sort of propped up on its side and, um, yeah, made it relatively easy. So let's get this chassis back into the frame of the monitor. Just get everything ready to go and we'll slide it back in. It gets on these sort of plastic rails, which is kind of neat. go. That's all the way in. And we'll screw it back in place. There we go. And this one over here. And then we'll be powering this on and hoping that there's no problems. <laughs> 
And uh, let's see. We have, and then uh, you know, then we'll uh, check and adjust the B plus if necessary. Um, there we go. A bit of gauze goes over here. Okay, we have our little red sort of wire tie that reminds me of like Nintendo style wire tie, which maybe makes sense because you know this is a Japanese monitor. Okay, and we have that's power, and we have what do we have? There's supposed to be something down here. Isn't there like another? Okay, we got the. That's the DAG. There's the yoke. Oh, geez. It's going like this. Nope, those are like this. Usually a yoke connector is sort of polarized, so you can only plug it in the right way. Like that, we got this goes here, the DAG onto the neck board. And the neck slides back on. Okay, and wasn't there like a wire down here that mounted on this? Am I forgetting that wrong? Or was that the, let me go look in the cabinet real quick. Is that like the uh, grounding strap? Yeah, I think that's the, I think that's for the ground, uh, sort of from the monitor power. So I'll just put this screw back in for safekeeping. And let me think. Uh, ba -ba -ba. We will want to put this weird <laughs> weird, weird, weird anode plug back on. And let's see. So many things about this monitor that are not sort of uh, typical. I guess I shouldn't call them weird. They're just so much different than, you know, what I'm used to, 4900s, GO7s, K7000s, that sort of thing. There we go. That looks good. And um, remember, we had that uh, other uh, sort of wire tie, and I can't quite remember where it was, so I'm just going to sort of put it over here seems to be as good a place as any. All right. And I found the thing that uh, had fallen off. It's this sort of clip designed for some sort of grounding strap or something. I just put it back on the monitor. Hopefully that won't be in the way when we remount things. But I think, I think we're good to power this thing on. Neck board is in. DAG wires connected, yoke, anode, the gauze. We should be good to go. So let's sort of move things over here. Move the monitor here so we can kind of see what's on the picture. And you can see that Xevious burn pretty good. And uh, it's light out right now, so we're gonna get some glare. But let's set this up. And first, I'm just going to power it on with nothing connected, um, <laughs> with a fire extinguisher ready to go, just in case. So I've got my portable compact isolation transformer power supply uh, that I built in a previous video. You can build one yourself. Uh, there'll be a link to that video in the description down below, plugging in the power connector. 
and we will attach a ground connector right here. Okay. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. And power for the isolation transformer. And just plugging it in over here. And just to prove I'm not kidding. <laughs> Here's my fire extinguisher, just in case. So uh, let me actually look at the back of the monitor, because if there's any kind of problem, that's where it's going to be. So keep your fingers crossed that we don't get a smoke show or anything like that. But uh, I think we're ready to go. So three, two, one. I hear the HV. Nothing on fire yet. Okay, that's, uh, that's a good sign. <laughs> no capacitors exploding for being in backwards. No signs of smoke. We're getting a little bit of a, a hum, but I believe that's, uh, I've heard, I've read online about people having that. There's a transformer on the, uh, the chassis that sort of vibrates at really a, a high frequency, but, um, Cool, so let me, uh, I'll power down. Actually, it's the transformer in my, it's my ISO that's vibrating and making that noise. That's strange. <laughs> All right, we're off. Uh, let me, I uh, forgot to look up the instructions for testing the B plus. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that and uh, I'll come back in just a second. Okay, I looked up the instructions, uh, check them in the manual and also on the Peter site, arcadepartsrepair.com. He's got instructions for setting the B plus in most monitors. And uh, first things first is I need to turn up the brightness all the way. So the monitor is powered on and brightness is controlled over here. And um, of course this tool <laughs> the pots on this monitor are just crazy. They don't want to fit any of my TV adjustment tools. And I'm not even entirely sure which direction will make the brightness go higher. Got to be one extreme or the other, right? And this pot doesn't want to move. Okay. All the way to the right. I can't tell it's too bright in here. <laughs> Let's try all the way to the left. It's like eating up my tool. I think that's got to be the brightest. It's like, yeah, that is okay. So brightness is all the way up and it's really the, it's the ISO um, that's making that sound. So it's some kind of issue with the draw. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, brightness is all the way up. Uh, red lead goes on TP D91, which is right here. Here, if I can grab it. All right, oops. All right, and there is our B plus adjustment. The black lead just goes onto the chassis frame. All right, and we're gonna be on DC volts and we want it to be 123. So let's turn it on and it's way low, interesting. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, our B plus is super, super low and not adjustable. Let's turn this off for a second. Let me double check, make sure my, yeah. I can only go from up to 97.3 down to 96. This B plus is not adjustable. It's not really changing at all. If I change the uh, brightness, Yeah, even on the lowest lowest brightness setting, that B plus is nowhere near nowhere near 123. So let's turn it back to highest. At least we're learning stuff. We're learning that there are more issues to be resolved here. And this is a common problem. So let's. Come on, I swear this thing. These pots are awful. Still not all the way. All right, now we're pegged. And yeah, we are not getting the B plus we want nor is it adjustable. So we're off. I'm gonna go do a bit more research and figure out what I should check next. Okay, I figured it out. And it was really only by blind, dumb luck that I was able to do that. So there's, there's two things that I changed. Uh, the first really didn't have an effect, but I accidentally had a, a ground wire that's supposed to attach to the frame down here. I had it connected to one of the, the, the screws that holds the deflection board in place. And I thought that was weird when I was putting it back together because it already has a ground wire right there on the deflection board. So I mounted it back down uh, onto that wire down there below. That really didn't make a difference. But what did fix things <laughs> was uh, changing the power supply that I was using. So uh, I had, you know, you saw me earlier, I had this hooked up to my, you know, compact portable isolation transformer arcade monitor test bench power supply, which, you know, I, I built a couple episodes ago and it's been, been working great for me, but this monitor just did not like that thing. You know, when I had it plugged in, it was, it was buzzing. It was vibrating when the monitor was on. Now, if I disconnected the monitor and turned the transformer back on, no problem. But when there was a load coming from this Matsushita monitor, <laughs> it just wasn't playing nice. So uh, I figured, Hey, you know, the last time, you know, when I, when I, you know, powered this monitor up before and we had the sink issues, it was plugged into the cabinet, right? Cause we've got the, uh, the isolation transformer, you know, transformer assembly down there in the bottom of the Irish, uh, kangaroo cabinet. Um, so I figured, Hey, why not give that a shot? Right? So uh, I plugged it back in. So now we've got the power coming from the, uh, the, the cabinet. We've got the grounding strap plugged in. Uh, I'm going to reconnect my black lead right there to get ground. Uh, we'll turn our multimeter to DC volts and uh, let's power on the cabinet and uh, you'll see what we get. Three, two, one. Look at that. 122.8, 122.9, 123 on the nose. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so our B plus is correct. And now if I turn on the TPG, look at that. We have got an image. It's locked in. <laughs> it looks amazing. Let me just change the, uh, the camera settings here. And look at that. Look at that image. It's actually really, really nice. It looks even better in person uh, than it does in the camera. It's coming right here. And we can walk through the different images. Maybe it needs to be the gauss, but look at that color. Look at those colors. Um, the brightness is great. Uh, this black is much blacker in person than it looks on camera. Yeah, look at that. It looks amazing. And uh, the B plus is 123.1 right now, so doing really great. Yeah, maybe it needs to be the gauss a little bit, but really a fantastic image. Um, just, just looks awesome. 
<laughs> so yeah, I did not let it defeat me. And again, this is a, whoa, a Matsushita model TM-202G. And you know what we're gonna do? Because we conquered it, we're gonna put our stamp on it. So this is a label that Peter includes from ArcadePartsRepair.com and all of his cap kits and rebuild kits. It's a little label that you can write your name on so I can get the backing off. There we go. So you can put your stamp on your handiwork. So I'll put this right here, right above the manufacturer's label. And so now I'll always know when I fixed it. <laughs> so you know what I'm really excited to do here is try hooking up the, uh, the game PCB. You know, it was running before, but when we had that sync issue before, you know, I didn't know for sure if it was really working. So let's do this. Let's turn off the TPG. Let's turn off the cabinet. I'll disconnect my multimeter. Okay. All right, man, it's hot out here. August is back with a vengeance. So um, we'll disconnect the uh, TPG cables here. So what's interesting is, oh, here it is right here. So if you can see this right here. So these are the, the, the video signal uh, wires that are in, in the harness of this cabinet. We have the main sort of video signal on this one, and this is the, uh, it's really a composite sync, composite negative sync, which is great because that's what um, uh, uh, the Matsushita monitor wants, the sort of uh, horizontal and vertical sync signals are connected together, right? So you see there's only really only one wire coming in and then it jumps it over, so it's looped. But uh, if I plug this in directly, right, I really only get red, green, blue, and ground on this main connector, and the six-pin connector takes up the entire six, yeah, takes up the entire uh, uh, input connector or uh, input header on the monitor, and there's nowhere to tie uh, the sink in. So what I did, I made a little adapter, kind of a makeshift <laughs> thing that I crafted, that basically will allow me to uh, change the pin out. So if I come in here, I'm sorry, it's kind of an awkward angle. I can line up my red goes to red. Uh, this is actually a blue wire and a green wire, uh, or uh, red, green, right? Red, green, blue, and then ground on that one. And then over here we have the sink, and there's a single sink wire that goes in like this. So now we have the connector that's coming from the harness of the cabinet, and I'm just double checking my line up here. And then we can come over here and plug that into the deflection board, the video input headers. And I'm hoping, if I did it right, if we come back over here and power this on, we should get Atari Kangaroo on this, on this monitor. And you know what's funny is, um, the upright, the uh, US manufactured upright version of the Kangaroo actually had a second set of, a uh, second video connector designed for this monitor, because Atari was using this Matsushita monitor in things like Millipede and, and other cabinets. Um, but the Irish harness doesn't have that sort of alternate connector for an alternate monitor. So, oh boy, okay. Um, so right now I'm gonna turn it back on. We've got the, the game PCB plugged in. I'm ho we know that the game PCB is running. We don't know if the image is, is corrupted or, or there's you know garbled, glitches, whatever. And I'm hoping that I've uh, sort of fashioned this uh, harness adapter correctly. So here we go. Keep your fingers crossed. Three, two, one. Let's see what comes up. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's kangaroo. Colors look great. We've got some geometry adjustments to make, sort of uh, maybe uh, horizontal or vertical position. Um, let me see if I can do that real quick. Let me turn the lights back on. It needs to come up a little bit. It's 
it's falling off the bottom of the screen. So let me find, let me find that's horizontal position. Where is, let me grab a flashlight, which is right here. We're looking for vertical size, vertical hold. Where would horizontal position, oh, vertical position is a jumper. And right now it's set to the middle. And I don't like doing these with the camp game is on. I probably could, but I'm, I'm also sweaty. So I'm gonna try moving it to one extreme and that will let us know which way to move it. So let's put it back on. But guys, <laughs> we've got a working kangaroo game. All right, that's maybe, that's too far. So I'll turn it off and we'll do it sort of in the moderate position. I can also mess with the vertical size too. Um, that looks, that looks pretty good. Let me adjust that vertical size a little bit just because the player two number is coming off the screen a tiny bit. And vertical size is right there. Let's see. How's that? Oh, let's, uh, let's actually change that vertical position jumper back to the middle. It was really the size pot all along. Okay, back on. And we can come a scotch. Now it went back to this other screen. That's a little too much, actually. I'd say that looks pretty good. When it comes back to the other screen, we'll see if that credit is uh, cut off. But guys, <laughs> uh, maybe horizontal position a tiny bit. Is there even a horizontal position? Uh, there is, but it's, it's hot glued in place. We can mess with that later. We've got a working kangaroo PCB. We've got, <laughs> we've got a working Matsushita monitor. That's probably the thing I'm most surprised about that this, that this, <laughs> I'll say piece of junk monitor. Yeah. Credit is visible. Um, yeah, we might want to move the uh, horizontal uh, position just a little bit to the left. Let me uh, start a game. See what that looks like. So it's on free play. I press start. It says, uh, let's challenge. Okay. Look at that. Oh no. Our baby's been kidnapped. And the joystick isn't set up, but we can jump. I'll actually. All right, I hit all the leaf switches. Um, like I said, because the joystick is not set up in here, but I thought I heard it move. So yeah, we've got a working kangaroo. <laughs> Holy cow, you know, just 10 minutes ago, I thought this video, this episode would end in failure, right? Or maybe just, I would, I would miss an episode this week, right? But, uh, <laughs> Somehow we did it, right? And it was all, it was the, the, you know, the isolation transformer. You know, the one, the one I put here just wasn't enough uh, for this Matsushita monitor. It's worked fine with Geo7s. It's worked fine with uh, 4900s. Um, I think I've had it on a, uh, a K7000. So, so this just, I guess the Matsushita maybe has a, it draws more amps maybe? I don't know. Uh, you know, somebody did uh, leave a comment at some point saying, uh, yeah, you might run into issue later on with larger monitors, like, you know, maybe a 25 or certainly a 27 inch would pull more amps that perhaps, you know, this is rated, I think, for only, only one uh, uh, amp. But, uh, but um, yeah, so that was, 
that was the issue. Um, and uh, I, I guess it, does free play not go into attract mode? Maybe it has a terrible uh, free play mode. Let's power cycle the cabinet just so we get it back to attract mode. But uh, yeah, just 10 minutes ago, I didn't think, <laughs> I didn't think this would be, this would work, but um, wow. So uh, gosh, uh, <laughs> where do I, where do I go from here? So I think we're maybe only one episode away from, from finishing this, right? So what, what, what's left to do with the kangaroo? We'll mount the monitor back into the cabinet. Uh, we'll fix up the joystick. I've got the instructions that I need um, to rebuild it just from the, uh, the, the Atari Kangaroo manual. I'm missing a couple of pieces, uh, but I think they're, they're basic things like a washer and a, um, an E-clip, and it needs a, it needs a bellows um, a bushing, basically. Um, but I think I have one that I, can, that I can use. I might even be able to steal parts or, from some parts joysticks that I have. But uh, yeah, we'll do a tiny bit of cosmetic work, you know, glue down some of the uh, wood grain laminate that's peeling and sort of cover up some of the the scars from that. Uh, I mean, obviously the big thing, the big thing that we're missing is the uh, the glass, uh, the combination, you know, bezel slash marquee. Um, so I'm definitely still looking for one of those. If you have one for sale, you know, again, this is an Irish kangaroo cabinet with a unique piece of glass. The bezel and the marquee are just one piece. So if you've got one of those, an original one, please let me know uh, I, whether you're willing to sell it to me or I'll pay you to scan it so we can get it reproduced. So uh, please reach out to me uh, if you've got a lead on that. But um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we'll start to wrap it up here. Um, if this is your first time watching, welcome to Overtime Arcade. Please consider clicking that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit that like button. It really helps me out, really helps uh, YouTube know to recommend videos like this to people like you. Uh, if you really, really like the video, click on that join button down below to learn more about what it, what it means to become an Overtime Arcade channel member. For $1.99 a month, you get access to some really cool exclusive perks like our members only Discord. We've got our monthly members only live stream coming up next week. Um, We've been having a blast sort of hanging out and talking to each other and sharing uh, deals and I share behind the scenes stuff and we talk about what we're working on and, and kind of help each other out. It's been awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, we've got some, some new channel members that I wanted to thank. Uh, Russell and Lungs and Sean, guys, you are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, it means the world to me. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I was, I did not think we'd be ending this episode on a, on a bright note, but um, yeah, uh, not the best game in the world, Kangaroo, what can I say? But hey, at least we got it working. So uh, with that, I think I'll sign off. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 Overtime!